what we are dealing with it is I think it is a way how to understand the prophetic saying we have two things here when you are treating the second source of Islam the prophetic saying and the prophetic example it is one thing it is the second part of revelation Islam so why is it important because the practice of the prophet it is to translate in practice Allah's message to human so it is the model to follow and to articulate and to live upon and help you to understand the message of Islam perfectly by practice okay so this is important why this is important? Again, this is the example to follow. And this is to translate, to explain to us practically the message of Islam. So we need the Prophet model to stay clear and enough to us as an information about him and to be perfectly understood. So we have two things to be done to make sure that the information related to the Prophet is right and secondly to understand this information perfectly so this is what we have to do now the hadith which is in between our hand which is very well known hadith and people live upon it me myself I could not live upon it. I felt as a Muslim woman who understands Islam, who is equipped with the tools in understanding Islam, and uh, by the way, this tool is open to anyone. You need just to go and to read and to read and then to be able to understand because this message is for everyone. But the thing about this hadith again the, the thing about this hadith that it is in contrast with the main <coughs> sources of sharia the main information that being given to us by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala lying is not acceptable lying is a way to hellfire lying is a way to not to be blessed by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in any minute of your life Muslim, Mu'min, actually we have this hadith and I think this is a core hadith in understanding that the believer is not a liar. Al Mu'minu la yakdib. So the source of evil is lying. Mm -hmm. So if we can, according to our Sharia, close this door of lying, people morality will be better. But to keep it open now, under the cons that this is a consensus, that you can do it on exceptional cases, well, who will guarantee that if this door is open, it will be shut in the right time? Well, again, it is illogic. It is in contrast with the main sources of Sharia. It is in contrast with prophetic sayings and prophetic model. And I, I recall this incident, it happened that a man, he came to the Prophet and he said to the Prophet, I love women. This guy, he said to the Prophet, I love women. He means sexually. He wants to have sex every single time with women. Any minute he sees a woman, a beautiful one, he wants to have sex with her. So the Prophet asked him, what do you want? So he said, would you give me the permission? I want to be a Muslim, but you give me the permission to what? The access to adultery. Every time to, uh, to, I want to have sex, that it will be okay in my part, in my sight. So the Prophet said to him, no, this is haram. This is unlawful. But I want to be a Muslim. He said, even though you have to be a bi. It is an obligation to follow Allah's order. So adultery is haram. It is forbidden. 
So this man in the end, he said, okay, I'll be a Muslim. And he went away. Later on, he came again. And the Prophet, he saw him and he remembered him. And he said to him, are you Muslim? He said, yes. He said, the Prophet, did you commit adultery? He said, oh, the Prophet of Allah, every single minute, I being very close to adultery. It is in my mind. But the minute I think of it, I consider it, I remember that I'll be united with you. I'll be in certain minutes be gathered with you. I'll meet you. And you are going to ask me. And I can't lie. And I felt the shame. I won't be able to lie. So this, this only took me away from a dead. To be honest, you know? So how could we then say that there is a consent, there is a consent, there is some special cases that yes, you can lie. No, you can't lie in Islam. Last time we said that an Imam Muslim was very clever to draw our attention to the fact that the first part of the hadith, it is prophetic saying. Again, that the one who passed the good information for reconciliation between people or say something good to bring them together, he is not alive. So this area, it is the green area, it is away from lying, don't worry about it, you go ahead, you try to bring people together, this is for a good thing, for a good target, you do it. And the second part, it was a Zuhri saying, and I think it is more to do with an observation. So it was an observation from a Zuhri, an Imam a Zuhri who is one of At-Tabi'een, he is not a companion, okay? So we have the Prophet, the other link is the companion, and the other link is At-Tabi'een. Just to say it now, it is just again like this. So we have here, we have the Prophet, peace be upon him, alayhi salatu was salam. This is the circle, and here we have the text. Then we have the companion of the Prophet. Maybe, may Allah be blessed with them. And then we have at tabiin the follower. Okay, so this is another circle, and then another circle, then another circle. Now again, the way this hadith being mentioned in books, it is not only one branch. So here the source, it is the prophet. And then the companions, well, we may have more than one companion. It will be just like a tree. And they are all the companions of the prophet Muhammad This is the chain, okay? And then we have the followers. And now we say, so this is our Sahaba, this is al Nabi alayhi salatu wasalam, and here we have, we call them at tabiin the followers, okay? And again, in every single circle, we may have more than one branch, okay? And this again will go for another branches, we call this the tree of hadith, okay? So this is the hadith. So the meaning of this hadith, they may not be able to, to bring it literally, but they will bring it in meaning. Okay? So if we have an, a united meaning, one meaning, with very close words, very similar words, okay? So this is the information of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu so what happened with this hadith? That the Prophet said something, the companion related the same thing, but here, at Tabi'in, and here we have a Zuhri. 
Al-Imam Al-Zuhri. Al-Imam Al-Zuhri, he mentioned his own observation. He said that people, people do it in such and such and such. And he mentioned family issue, husband and wife, lying about each other, but not to say that won't they do it in purpose. I'll give you an example. Again, this is observation. This is not an exceptional thing, okay? That we have to be biased and try to be honest with our husbands and try to be honest as husbands with our wives and with our children. Lie is an evil source, the source of evil. We don't want it in any step in our life living upon Islam, okay? So what people may do, for example, exaggerating. Mm -hmm. We do it. Uh -huh. It is just like saying what, but we didn't do it in purpose of lying. Mm -hmm. For example, you taste something nice. The husband, the wife, she cooked something nice. So the husband will say, MashaAllah, I never taste something delicious. as delicious as that. Uh -huh. Well, Perhaps 10 days from that time, he will say the same word <laughs> to one of his friends. But in both situations, he was telling his own impression, but not to lie about it. Mm -hmm. The meaning that minute he felt like this. Mm -hmm. yeah. But he wasn't saying as a lie. You see, uh, our children do this. You give him some nice thing and he said, I never taste this before. He, did, he doesn't remember that. I have this with my children. Mm -hmm. Every year I remind them about the names of fruits, especially when they are younger, you know? They said, we never saw this before. <laughs> <laughs> but come on, you ate it, you loved it last year. Because we have this season, you know? So they forget, but they are not like. You see, uh, the wife on her husband he is not the most beautiful man on earth, but in his, in her eyes, yes, he is. So the minute she say, uh, uh, you are the most uh, handsome man ever. Well, again, it is in her eyes. And we have the saying in Arabic, that the beauty is the description of the eyes. <laughs> no, saying, the beauty is in the eye of the beholder. Exactly, it is the so same. So how I see something, you might see it differently because our our focus is from a different angle. Well, if you say that it is the most beautiful thing, it is not a lie. And later on you saw something even more beautiful than that, you say. But again, in, in both situations, you wasn't lying. I think this observation of an Imam al-Zuhri is in that area. Allah Alam. Yes. Madam Dua, I searched for a question. It's from the beginning when I was, it's also from some people, I searched for information and they give me the same uh, uh, like story about life, but a little bit different way. So I don't know, is it ex acceptable or not? Uh, they describe what sometime, like for example, a man husband cheat his wife. Uh, so God allowed for him to, I swear, and with Quran and his name of Allah, what he didn't cheat her. Why? Because it's necessary to save the family. Uh, this is what she's talking about. Yes. Well, no. Yeah. Sorry. But so it's not it's well, possible. Again, again, I, I look. The evil. Uh, no. We have this saying. The good, the good aims, the good aims, it is not an excuse to use evil tools. We have this, Al-Ghayatulatubarri So if you have good target, it is not lawful to you to go and to achieve it by or via evil vehicle. So this is not the right vehicle, okay? You have it in English, I'm sure. Yes, the end doesn't justify the means. And this is very true. So, yeah. Islam is principle against 
place. those evil place. ways, place. yes, evil vehicles, evil tools to reach whatever. And again, historically speaking, you never come across, and I said as a final observation, inshallah, you never come across, historically speaking, any incident, wars, which they mentioned, mm -hmm. they, they say in Arabic, according to one sound tradition, al harb khida <laughs> that war lie, you know, um, war depends, rely upon khida khida is like tricks. Treachery. Yes. Yeah. Deceiving. Yeah. Well, Arbor. deceiving, but not lying. Uh -huh. Hang on. It is about tricks. I'll give you this example. In the, we have this, uh, which is Mu'ta war, Mu'ta combat, okay? That the Muslim army was in, in trouble, <coughs> really, they've been troubled with the opposite army. So we have that leader come forward, it is Khalid ibn Walid, may Allah be blessed with him. And I think what he has done, he been just like playing chess, changing the, the, yes, the two, uh, what you call, um, plans, strategies, uh, not only, it is a strategy, it was a strategy, his strategy was the wings of the, you know, the army, he been changing them, okay, what is backward coming forward, what is forward coming backward, mm -hmm. and he asked some soldiers to go in the desert and try to run quickly to make, you know, um, let's say, um, dust. Yes, dust. big, yes, dust, a big wave of dust uh, to make, the, to give the impression that they have somebody come and help them, you know, helping them. There is extra people coming, extra soldiers coming. So he was deceiving them again, but lies wasn't there. He didn't tell a lie, not even a single lie. But what he has done, he made some moves that gave the audience, the, someone who can look at it and think about something deception. else. It yeah, is also deception. before the Prophet entered Mecca from Medina, the night before, didn't he have his people go out and set many, many fires? When the people looked out, it looked like exactly. a massive <coughs> army coming in from Medina, from Mecca, from everywhere. It was deception, but not a lie. It just gave the appearance that there were exactly. hundreds of thousands. So this is exactly what is soldiers. meant by the Prophet saying, al harb al mm -hmm. It is, war is deception. deception. Mm -hmm. Yes, it is. And the third one, again, it is about reconciliation. We said it. It is you coming and you want to reconcile between two people. You tell this, the right, the good things, the good mm -hmm. information about the other one. And this will change his impression about that guy. This may soothe in his heart toward this guy. And things will be going toward reconciliation. But again, lying is not involved. Okay? Cheating on husbands or cheating on wives and to say, yes, I can swear by Allah. Well, look, if this was something to be acceptable, you want ever read the verse which is called al mulana verse which we have it is in chapter of nur the light chapter it is surat al nur well this is the most horrific situation about cheating on husband okay even in that time the wife is not allowed to lie actually she is required to swear five oaths that she didn't. Mm -hmm. And if she was lying, she is getting Allah's anger. Allah will be angry with her. Mm -hmm. So how could it be okay in even slighter situation? We are talking here in this verse of Quran about the situation that she will be isolated from her husband. She will be looked at to be sh named and shamed by the community. But even in that horrific situation, she is not allowed to lie to keep her family and or to keep her family back to her family. I stop here, so again, to end 
lying is not there. This part of hadith which is related to the Prophet Muhammad وسلم, this part is not something that the Prophet said, peace be upon him.